Hello everyone, welcome to another week in our beautiful sunny garden. Now the wind direction today is coming from the bypass so if there's a little bit of traffic noise I do apologise. Now we're down in amongst the Brassica tunnels and we've come down to have a look at these cauliflowers and they're beginning to purple a little bit so we've made the decision now we're going to have to lift them. These are the Cheze or Cheesy or however you want to call it. These are really really ready now and if I think if I leave them much longer in the sun it's not going to do them any good at all. Okay so we'll take the cover off and show you what we've got in there. This is the cauliflowers that we're going to lift. If you can see the bright sunshine is just starting to give them a little tinge of pink or purple on them and that might spoil the curd so the best thing we can do with these is lift them and get them up to the house and get them frozen ready for this winter. There's quite a few we'll just show you briefly the what's in the bed and then we'll get on with lifting them. Now these are on the north side of the bed and as you can see these are uh, absolutely perfect beautiful collie that is. The centre of the bed there is a, a little bit of colour in it but they're absolutely perfect. Now the rest of the cauliflowers in this tunnel are fairway. Now I grow fairway as a summer cauliflower because I don't know if you can see here the leaves really curl over the curds and protect them. If I just open it, can you just see the curd forming down there? They're a little bit behind the others, but the leaves will actually cover the curds so it keeps the sun off them. This one, I won't disturb it too much, but can you see how the leaves really curl over the curds so it keeps them milky white? That's fairway, a lovely summer collie. Now we've lifted the cauliflowers, there were seven that we got in the end. We got a full wheelbarrow load with seven curds, so that's not too bad at all. Now you saw how the, the summer collies are covering the tops. These didn't cover the tops, the cells. So I just couldn't leave them in there any longer, they had to come out today. They have to go in the freezer because we're not on hot meals at the moment, it's too hot, we're eating salads every day. There's seven there, we've had two already, so that's nine. So we lost one on the ten batch, but that's not too bad for for collies. They, they look absolutely beautiful. Now we're at the back of the shed, facing north, it's lovely and cool just here. And this is the Morello Cherry. We've taken the net off it and um, now we're going to harvest it because they really are ready look. The fruits are really ripe now, some have fallen off and gone on the floor and the birds have soon taken those away. So I think it's time we took the rest. Nice crop. Now when you're picking them you can either do it with a pair of scissors. What you don't want to do is grab them and rip them else you rip this little shoot off here and that will be next year's cherries you're losing and you'll finish up with a stem like that look if you just rip them off so I would recommend that if you're taking them get a pair of scissors and take them off I'll just nip in the shed and get a pair of scissors and then we'll harvest and come back to you when we've done them all beautiful crop they're lovely and shiny berries I'm well pleased and then when we've harvested them. Now we've picked the cherries, we've got a good half a basket, we've already had about half a basket so we've done very well out the cherries this year. So that's the Morello cherries we've picked, that's made now about a full basket and that tree is only five years old now so that's done very very well. Now, Looking at the tree, you can see it's put on all these new growths. And now is the time to prune the stone fruit. So if you prune it now, there's less risk of silver leaf. 
we can take these new growths back I'm going to take them back to three buds so if you take that one three new buds on there look and I'm going to take that one off there this one we'll take that one off there I'm just trying to keep it growing on the end of the shed now the top as you can see is really grown away so I'm going to later this evening I'm going to put another wire across in fact I might put two wires across and then take it take it like that with two remove some of these front ones and stop the top one so I can just fill this apex with cherries as well I'm just going to give them one two three and chop off these ones that's sticking straight out I'll take back to two these are the sensi secretaries by the way they're still working very well you see this here was caught with a, a late frost and it's actually killed the killed the buds that were going to fruit for us but we'll get them at the end now what I might do next year is when this grows again just tie that in as well so it fills this gap the end I'm not going to trim the end because I want it to go to the end of the shed so I'll leave the ends and then I'll tie those in just nip along here now if the sticking out like this one then I'll only go to two I'll go in there look you see so and then three to the ones that are following the route this one we'll take one along and we'll take the other one back so that's the one we'll tie in it's just a case of getting your eye into it and you'll soon be able to do it that one will tie in so this one will take off there this one not damaged that one while I was picking never mind so we'll take that off and we'll tie that one in not a problem same again right? we'll do that one there I think we'll just do this branch then and we'll I'll put the you see this one's got two I think originally I was going to go one up and one along like that but not now so I'll take this one out all together so take that one along that one along that'd be fine unfortunately we've got a drain pipe going through it so we'll have to work around it this one at the bottom that will just rub out on the shed look so we'll take that back take it back to there I think then that one will tie nicely onto that wire there this one here is going to do no good at all look now so I'm going to take that one off all the way now we've got new growths coming in likewise with that one look, we'll take it back there I think that one that's doing that there so that's what we do now if we're doing a spallier on the shed so it covers the whole of the shed like a fan and that look very nice a few years more growing yet but when we're there we do exactly the same along the branches and also if you can imagine the crop you'll get off them then now we've got plums to prune as well so when we're down the garden I'll show you how we prune those best to do them in the middle of summer and then the other fruit trees the apples and the pear etc we just lightly prune those in the summer and then we prune them seriously in the winter but your stone fruits must be pruned now so you don't get the silver leaf and it would be better although it's difficult to predict but if you know you've got a few days dry weather like we have now it's ideal time for pruning stone fruit now while we're here you can see the front of this little bed is where we grow the comfrey I don't actually make smelly tea with my comfrey what I do I let the bees 
have it while they're flowering and they really really love it and then when they've finished flowering like they have now cut it all off and just lay it into the compost heap I find that's an easier way of doing it I would make the tea and I made it once but Diane is absolutely disgusted with the smell of it so I don't make it down there. I just put it on the compost heap there you go then that's the cherry tree trimmed pruned I've just got to fetch the time machine now and tie these loose ends on and I'll put two more wires across this evening and get those taped on as well on a beautiful afternoon and I just got a few minutes so I thought we'd take a bit more off the plums if you remember we're doing stone fruit this time of year when there's no risk of rains and that damp weather that will bring in the silver leaf it actually comes down with the rain gets into the cuts and the splits when you've done your pruning and that's how it enters the tree so if you do it while there's plenty of sunshine and it's dry the tree has time to heal up before the rain can get in then the silver leaf can't get in as you can see there's quite a bit of aphid on it this year it's probably down to this long dry spell we've been having I've had a look round and there's loads and loads of ladybirds on them and there's hoverflies hovering about a few wasps as well but that's all good that will help control the aphid so I'm not going to start grabbing the knapsack and spraying the tree while we've got all this good wildlife on it so we'll let them get on with their job and but I just want to lightly prune some of these long branches that are coming out just to keep the tree nice and compact so as you can see is a ladybird on this one doing her job so what I shall do because I can see her I'll put her in the tree now we'll follow it back I want to stop it about here somewhere if you don't it'll be all over the the rest of the garden so just follow it back to where there's a node or another little branch in this case it with this one and then we just go in and snip likewise with this one too this one hasn't got a branch so we take it to a leaf node look and just take them off there you go look just like that it's absolutely loads of aphid on it but I'm not too concerned just to keep the tree some sort of shape look see all these new branches that are going up I don't want them right up there I won't be able to as and when they do get through Tom we won't be able to reach it right up there so I should just go round it's more or less removing some not all but some of the new wood another ladybird there look so we're careful now Oops. just go round look remember if it's a, a new growth this year next year it'll be even longer so just enough to control the tree don't go jumping in and cutting big pieces out it won't do it any good at all but just this area to do here just take these long branches off that are going to really get going <coughs> oh aphids making me sneeze here we go then just take them back to a leaf node take that one as well this one we'll take it back to there just to make it nice and tidy now that's tidied it up nicely all the branches that are sticking out the branches at the bottom have taken off as well that's all I'm going to do to this young tree this year it won't be pruned at all now until next summer and if you keep doing this every year you can keep your tree in a nice shape and although it doesn't look like it's fruiting in the center there's 40 or 50 plums that it's actually produced in the center even though we had a bit of a late frost so it's doing fine 
Now, I've done this young tree as well. It's another plum tree. That's all I'm going to do to them. And if, if you can see the whole tree, it's a lovely shape now. And that's what we've been after. We've pruned it previous years. You can see here, look, and it's breaking nicely now. Now, as I said before, it doesn't need a heavy pruning, just a light pruning to keep it in shape and keep the tree down where you can pick it. It's no good going too high for you. Now, for the last week, I've done the cherries, I've done the plums. I've also done lots of cutting of the trimming, the pyracanthus, etc. And I've done them all with as you see they're getting a bit dirty now because they've had a lot of use they are good second tiers they've never failed me yet when I've asked them to do something and they, they're nice and comfortable in the hand so the sensi second tiers for me gets a tick they're a good second tier and believe me if they weren't as good I would tell you right so we'll go up and we'll plant some of those carrots now in that little raised bed we've got but on the way i'll show you what's left of the peas now we did pick some last night and diane will probably put a picture on to show you how many we picked and there's still an awful lot to go yet okay so we'll probably pick this evening when it cools down a bit we've done two baskets full we're picking very well as you can see there's quite a few of them and there's lots lots more to go yet but we'll keep you up to date with what we're picking while i was down the garden i picked the rest of the calibrese the broccoli it's beginning to flower and i just can't hold it anymore in this uh, hot weather so we've picked them all and now i'll remove the plants and prepare the ground for some more now just as we go towards the raised bed I just thought I'd show you the summer cabbages coming along nicely they're nearly ready for harvest if they get much bigger I'll be sending them to England to practice playing football with right here's the peas as you can see we haven't picked this side yet we'll take this bird netting off and then get all these picked and then we can clear the ground picking's quite easy with the peas but the podding takes quite some time it makes my hands sore <laughs> now as you can see i've watered this side of the raised bed i've actually been watering it all week to try and soak the underneath so it's a bit wetter underneath now it's a mixture of compost and our soil so it's not the best of things for the carrots but i'm sure it's good enough to get them going so what we'll do we'll make a bit of a run nut there's still a lump or two in it but it's it's soil it's not it's not stone so it should be all rather difficult to do it now it's wet but we'll do it we'll do them what six inches apart yeah these are autumn king so hopefully they'll make some size on them i'm just making a rough a rough line down not too precise because what i'm going to do is put a handful of compost on top once i put the seed on and then I'm going to moisten it and put the uh, put the hessian on top. There we are. It's enough to to just open the seed run up. We'll do four and then get them seeded in. About there, I think. And then um, I'll open it up with my hand, it's easier. These are the seed I'm going to put in. There's one from Sutton's with an Anton. 
and there's one from Unwinds. They're both January King 2 and hopefully we can get them raised up. Here's the seed, quite small and what I'm going to do I'm actually going to set it because I know they're all not going to germinate I'm going to set it quite thick that's why I bought two packets one for this side one for that side so we just what I'm going to do is dribble it in quite thick yeah, not quite to the end And then I'll pick that end up when I get to here because the camera person's in the way then. So up there lot and there. Now if and it is a big if they all come up, we can always thin them. And it's a good job we get a lot of carrot seed for our money, isn't it? But this is Autumn King too. When you're putting your seed in by hand and you're sort of rolling it in don't squeeze it too much because as you're rolling it you'll actually crush the seed so very gently let it release. Now what I've done I've mixed some compost with some vermiculite and I'm just sprinkling that on top now of the seed down the rows. It'll also the vermiculite will also be a marker so I know where to look to see whether they germinated or not. Not too much. So I put seven rows in there. I just now have to press the seed down and then I'll put the Essien on and give them a drink. Okay. What I'm gonna do use the same stick that to mark the to mark them with and just give them a press. That makes sure the seeds are all going to get contact with the, hopefully, the moist compost. Okay, I'll just do those up that end. Here are the seeds are pressed in. Now I'm not going to water just yet. I'm going to put the hessians on and then water. And then later on I'll do the opposite side, just to say. And then I'll just cover a fleece on top, put some pegs around it off the clothesline if nobody's watching and pop those around it just hold it in place and hopefully keep having a look keep the hessian moist and within a week or so we'll hopefully have some carrot seed here's the hessian i've already pre-damped it and it it smells a bit of potatoes and we're just going to drape that on the top this was an idea that was given to me by one of my subscribers who very kindly let me know this would be quite successful in this hot weather and another piece on top just have to do the best to pull it over having been told about it and then doing it you can see that it's quite a practical way of raising carrots in this hot weather so thank you very much for that tip now I'm just going to put some water on it now just to wash it down probably be tomorrow or tomorrow evening now before I get the other side in but rather a lot to do hello Friday today it's a lovely overcast day and I can feel odd spots of rain believe it or not it's been that long since we had some rain it's a wonderful feeling still we'll get on before it does rain I'm going to lift the broad beans this morning we have been picking them over but I want to now clear the run remember when you lift your bean peas etc to leave the roots in the ground because there are nitrogen nodules on so what I should do is I cut the plants off take them to the end strip the beans off I'll pop the horns or the tops through the shredder and put them straight into the compost heat and then they'll decompose quite quick you'll find that if you don't chop them up a bit they tend to take a long long time to decompose the stems 
Right, we'll get on with this and we'll show you what we've lifted, okay? Now, that's a trug of broad beans picked. It's the last of them now. We've had quite a few after them already. So that'll be it when that's through. We'll probably put those in the freezer for winter use. Now, while I'm here and the rain is just getting a little heavy, but I'll carry on for a moment. I'm just going to thin this beetroot down a bit and take the smaller ones for use in the salads. So I'll go through them and then I'll let you see what we've pulled. These are the ones that I'm thinning. There's what you call baby beet at that size. We just take them up to the house, boil them up, and they'll be beautiful. So, there you are, that's a few baby beet for the salads. They're really, really tasty when they're that size. Now, we've got quite a few peas still to pick. I shall remove this, this bird net and then we'll pick this side off but it really is getting quite heavy the rain now so i think we'll leave these and we'll pick them when it brightens up a little and i'll show you a picture of what we've picked on the next video now it is getting quite a big drops now and we don't want to be out in the rain so that'll be about it for this week hope you've enjoyed it I'm so pleased to see this rain, it's unbelievable. I would stay out here and get wet, but not good at my age, I don't think. That'll be about it for this week. Thank you for watching. Many, many thanks for subscribing, and hopefully we'll see you next week, and with a bit of luck, we might be a little bit wetter than what we are now. Okay, bye now.